Hey guys, Monk to do here of course. Today we're going to discuss the mains. Do apologies, my headsets are all messed up so I don't know what I'm doing so hopefully the sound sounds okay for you guys. So, modifications, aiming systems here. Uh, AA Guns mod is a potential option there. It's got pretty strong AA so it is consideration but really realistically aiming systems is the one to go for. Uh, propulsion mod is always a good, always a good staple. Steering gears is your preference. Propulsion mod just gives a lot more, in my opinion. You could go steering gears, but I do think concealment is better here, rather than not dodging at all. No need to dodge when you are concealed. Main barrier mod is probably definitely going to go. You increase that German DACA. Um, yeah, the mains is a lot like the Weimar, and I'll have the video for the Weimar or Weimar here. As you notice, it has actually got a bit of less, a real, less of a reload under for the Weimar, but it does have a spicy 5.6 km sonar, which is superior to the Weimar and a lot more torpedoes as well. So, something to note. In terms of the armor scheme, pretty much coated in 25 with 27 light meter deck. It does indeed have a nice brick of bow, which is something to note, but it's only the middle layer, not uh, the top. Hence, icebreaker only for breaking said ice. Um, rear plating is obviously fragile, the butt's quite fragile. Pretty obvious turtle back here, as you can see. Pretty good, decent turtle back. Again, it's a cruiser turtle back, so will uh, not always work too well against battleships. Your deck plating is also encased in uh, armor here, so you probably get pretty a lot of pains on this boat, and you will get some shatters and. Penetration is a few, very few for pens in the mains. Um, pretty much not the case unless you're passing through right the top part of the ship, which is a 25. As you can see, the part of the deck is encasing the citadel there. And please note that turtleback armor schemes only protect long, uh, short range citadels, and even with a certain caliber of guns, a straight side shot will still yield citadel damage. You can see the sides of the citadel are quite fragile. Fortunately though, the deck slopes, the angled deck slopes on the side are 40 millimeters, meaning that Georgia cannot overmatch the side part of your citadel, which is more likely the case when you get plunging fire. Uh, com uh, Commander recommendation, Carl von Miller, uh, same as my Weimar build here, burn it down. You could go beyond range if you don't feel as comfortable with this build, and I, 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 I will stress that beyond range is probably a more comfortable build, but this I'm very used to for my own personal preference. So yeah. Uh, as you said, we've got options here. An agile build is not a bad idea as well. You could run Genius. Pretty much this loadout with similar inspirations from Carl von Miller. And again, you can run Villages or Punch Through. It really is your choice, but I'm giving you some Tim Commander bread to work with, metaphorically. So, something to note as well, the AP on the veins is not to be, dis is not to be uh, trifled with. It's uh, not to be underestimated, so very very good ap and you have a lot of torpedoes two sets of four per side you have a lot of torpedoes at your disposal so it is definitely something not you don't want to get too close to the mains in uh in a brawl anyway without further ado we'll send into the battle <coughs> okay so this game here we got Celesto in division here with our lexington this was on a stream so if you guys have seen this i do apologize but hey i can go through and discuss uh, what was going through my mind at the time. So, mains here. You really want to find yourself in a position where you can farm ships and not be spotted in return. You really don't want to kite unless you absolutely need to. It's not really built for kiting. You have very slow turrets. You have a questionable armor scheme. It's not completely coated in the plating of your choice. You only get 27mm deck and icebreaker on a very few, very small parts of the ship. Yes, you have the bow, and yes, you have parts of the stern, but not everything is all hunky dory. The turtle back armor scheme does help the cruisers not get citadels on you. Again, from long range, it doesn't really matter, but the battleships will have no problem getting massive penetrations or a lot of citadels on you. It's very easy to get dev struck in the mains. You really don't want to risk the, da the damage you take, like just like the Weimar. A lot of armor is always not necessarily a good thing. It can mean, no matter what they do, they have a high chance of getting a penetration and maybe even a citadel. So, you've got to take them, play the mains with care. So, if we decide to take the shot, we know, we realise that our detection does not mean uh, that the Siegfried will spot us. There's line of sight issues there, 
and there's nothing nearby that's spotted that is within our line of sight. So as a free shot, definitely take advantage of as many free shots as possible. And realistically, that's how you should play this. You should not be seen too much in the mains, and if you are, it's more of a desperation attempt. Now, we fired there thinking, hey, we might be clear, but the battleship, uh, the DD in the cap, potentially, or approaching the cap when Charlie is spotting us. So we do it. We pull a massive maneuver here to slow down, try and avoid the Georgia salvo. Luckily enough, we do slow down and dodge that salvo, and we are in the kiting mode here. We're going to keep shooting because there's realistically, by the time you get behind the island, our detection penalty will kick in and we'll still be spotted, so it's not much point not to keep firing. As you see, <clears throat> German quarter pen on his guns. We're doing some nice damage. 15, 19 pens. This is really what the main is about. Not necessarily about the fires, it's all about the penetration of the HE shells. <clears throat> now, uh, poor exiled here. Um, it's a wonderful guy here, wonderful player as well. He's just kind of stuck up a creek here, just can't really do too much. Now, we have uh, developed some island cover here. We will have gone dark. Siegfried was spotting us temporarily, but now he is no longer within our line of sight, so we can farm this Georgia endlessly. And this is the prime example of where you want to be. Um, as you can see, we're not spotted. We're farming a target that's spotted for us, and realistically, he's got nothing that he can do unless he breaks line of sight, which for a battleship is typically quite hard. And with my build, you do get some fires as well as the quarter pen on the HE, and even the Shimakazi's dropped as a smoke screen, which is absolutely great for us. I mean, we don't even need it, but hey, it's always nice to have. Friendly DD is also, enemy DD, sorry, has also dropped a smoke screen which is concealing us even better. So we've technically got a double smoke screen. Not that it makes a difference. Smoke fire penalty is only uh, <clears throat> is a one trick. If you know, if my detection smoke fire penalty was 11 kilometers and the Georgia was flat within 10, even the double smoke screen, triple smoke screen wouldn't make a difference. I would still be spotted. But uh, Georgia does go dark temporarily. We're going to fire on what we can. We do see the gearing here. So we're just going to send some torps. I know they don't have the range, but just in case he decides to push in, a little bit of disencouraging stuff is always useful. Sometimes you don't always have the range of the torps, but just knowing they're there puts another bit of thought for that gearing to worry about. More torps that might have the range, might not have the range. He doesn't know who sent them precisely. It could be the, the enemy Fletcher, or our, our Fletcher who sends them, or it could be, uh, you know, you never know. So always good. Uh, keep your enemy guessing, keep them wondering and seeing what's going on. So. Finish off the gearing, uh, we do have a Siegfried here. We really should be switching to AP here, but we see the Georgia just at the minute, and trying to get rid of the Georgia early on is very good. Battleships are very dangerous. Yes, they are. Um, we do get spotted temporarily. We are actually quite well angled here, but again, this is a Georgia 18 inch guns, not very pretty to deal with, so let's try and avoid that. Get back into spotting here. Unfortunately, for the Georgia's sake, he does dodge that salvo. We do do that. They dodge that salvo, and we're really just farming the poor guy to death. It's just, it's pretty brutal. <clears throat> and we do, I think we do pick up the arsehole award here. Yes, do we? Yeah, we think we do. Yes, like, as you see, biggest thing about the mains, not just the fires, is the penetration. Every time you hit, you get damage, and it really adds up. As you saw, like, we have like nearly 40 pins there. He does get a good hit on us there. But it does kind of glance off and not really get the citadel that you want. So we do pick up the Arsenal Award on Per Exiled, and I'm pretty sure he'll get him back for that very soon. Siegfried, we're going to switch to AP because the mains AP is not to be trifled. It's incredibly good. As you can see, six penetrations there. Uh, Siegfried's got 15 inch guns. If we angle, we should be able to mitigate most of that anyway. And you see, we're picking up some good hits there. We do get eight pens there, we can't really see them. There we go. He's not bad salvo for him being bow on. We do switch to HE, but we don't have any good firing angles here. So we push in and we're gonna be pretty aggressive. Solar is off cooldown here, and to be fair, this is kind of a bad play rushing the Siegfried here, but getting him off and getting him out of the game, getting rid of a target is quite important as well. So we're gonna fire the torps on one side already, and you can see. That's a lot of torps heading for that target there, so that's something to know. Uh, we fire HG here, fire what we have, switch to AP, and the AP will just do absolute murders. Really, really disgusting. Look at that, nine penetrations and an overpen. One bounce, I don't know how, but there we go, pretty much. 
And we don't even need the torps, the, the AP does it all. He fires his torps, we kind of knew that was going on, so we turned away preemptively, and those were no longer a threat. So, picked up 132k here. We have uh, helped our team secure the Charlie Cap, and the enemy seems to have one on the opposite side on the, what do you call it? The Bravo side. <clears throat> Friendly carrier here is uh, going to give us some spotting, maybe, hopefully. Probably something along that in the stream here. Again, uh, you'd have to, you can look at the actual stream itself and see what happened. This was live comms here. But hey, this is a really good example of how to means, in my opinion. Really, realistically, you I wasn't spotted too much. And when I was spotted, I was in a position where you really couldn't get much value out of shooting my ship. That's the whole point of these things. You really want to play these as a careful cruiser, uh, shooting behind islands, using cover, and uh, dodging as much as physically possible to try and mitigate any damage you take, while dishing out as much as you can impossible possible. In, in return, sorry. Um, yeah, as I said, it's realistically, it's, it's quite a... It's very good at what it does, but you need to, need to handle it due to care, otherwise you can go down really quick. Uh, the HE spammer that is easily killable, which I quite like. Usually we have problem ships like Okachov or Wichita, which um, if used incorrectly can still yield really good results, which is not very good. Usually we have HE spammers that are weaknesses to getting shot. <clears throat> but fortunately for us, uh, we have the mains, which is again very disgusting in terms of DPM and pink putting out the damage, but it doesn't like to take too much in return. So, careful play, careful positioning, and uh, utilization of cover and uh, concealment will get you really good results without taking too much in return. So, in my opinion, rewards good play, so I'm happy with that, to be honest. Yeah. So, shooting the mains there, uh, sorry, Yamato, and uh, we are, uh, un basically he can't shoot his back because of the island. Care for us is definitely a threat, so we need to be careful about what we're shooting at ever so often, just taking a look at the Care first and seeing what he's doing. The guns aren't focused on us, we're just keeping a careful eye on him. <clears throat> we are giving him flat broadside, yes. You could potentially death strike us, yes. That's why we're checking his guns and we're being as much careful as possible and even turning in. We gotta make sure that the Care first is not inclined to shoot us either, so we do give, have to give his guns a fair amount of respect as well. So. As I said, we're, putting, we're turning ourselves, turning our ship in, putting it towards the island, so we can start farming the GK as well. Uh, we can't do too much to Yamato, even we can't shoot over the island. That being said, the Germans usually have quite bad island uh, arcs for shooting over islands, but with the mains and the Weimar, because of the small caliber gun, you can quite comfortably shoot over some islands, not like the Americans can, but you can get some really good work in. Double fire in the GK, so we're going to switch to AP while it's giving us a broadside. And we're going to farm a little bit more damage here. Uh, there is a chance you could have the triple fire skill, so we got to give that a little bit of respect there. And just be happy and satisfied with the two fires and get the AP going. Now, he did fire us here, but I think it was with HE potentially, so didn't get too much luck. I think it only slightly grazed us, which is fine. We've got a single fire, I think we're going to keep the single fire going. And we do finish off the GK with AP. Now, the um, reason I kept the fire going, just in case that he had uh, additional fires coming in, he could have disabled my engine in the rotor and I couldn't be able to repair that. To be fair, really fires don't last that much and I haven't really used any heals yet, so you know, I'd like to keep my damage control open for what happens with this Yamato engagement. Now, it's 3 on 3 here, we have a 3 cap lead, similar point schemes here. And I'm feeling pretty confident at this point. We picked up a mighty 191k. We picked up the Witherer while we were farming the GK, also the High Caliber as well. And we're basically waiting for this Yamato to make that mistake to try and rush this boat. <clears throat> as we mentioned before, a lot of torps. Eight per side, that's a lot of torps, folks. You could realistically, if you get a turning, you got send 16 torps towards your enemy. Now that's pretty darn dangerous for any ship, really. And again, 6 come to range, so more uh, of a safety feature more than anything. Uh, enemy implacable uh, will do some really good work on us here if he gets a decent salvo with his AP bombs. But fortunately, it was kind of a luckless salvo. He could have 
broke our computer tubes, it could have caused a lot more problems, but fortunately the Weimar, eh, sorry, not the Weimar, the mains has pretty good AA. So we're going to fire one set a little bit early, just in case he's feeling a little bit confident, and then uh, if he decides not to do that, we can just turn around. We could have fired a second set there, but we just could be rather air on the side of caution and just make sure that he thinks, okay, that's all that to be descent. So we send a little bit for back in return just in case. Because by the time he gets those torpedoes, it means we have we'll have cover. And if he doesn't have cover and has a chance to shoot us, then he's gonna some corps. So there's really realistically good options here. Now this tactic is basically shooting while you're in line of sight. But as soon as you fire, you go out You go out of line of sight and basically go dark. So he fired his shell, but he couldn't actually get anything done. And because he thought he fired at least the first time, the second set got him. And we do pick up a Kraken here with 209,000 damage. So yeah, pretty good. We're doing pretty darn smacking well um, in terms of the damage output. And again, just picking up the kills at the right times and really getting the work done. We're going to eat this torp, unfortunately. Can't really do much about it. Uh, not enough wiggle. Probably could have avoided it if I played a little bit more with my rudder. But hey, that will do. Um, I don't think we get any more damage on the Implacable. Don't think we can get much done on him. He's a little bit far away, but we do have 926 points. So uh, no way we're going to break the main record unless we have a little bit less cap control and a little bit more time to kill. But uh, no, Shimikaze comes in and he basically cleans up shop. So let's still clip finishes him off with the mighty kill steal, and that's all she wrote. So yeah, pretty darn, pretty darn strong mains game, and it just shows you when you're playing smart and you don't have to dodge every five seconds, you have a lot more openings to get out the DACA, get out the AP, get out the HE, and you can see when you're using all the different ammo types, you're playing smart, using cover, and you're using tactical positioning, you can get really good results with the mains. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sorry for the audio quality. Hope this helps you out, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.